Hey guys, and welcome back to the Spruce and Linen channel. I'm Janelle, and today I'm gonna show you what to do with your weaving once it's off the loom. So we're gonna tie those warp strings, tuck them in, and get it onto the dowel so that you can hang it on your wall. Okay, so this weaving is now off the loom, and as you can see, I've already tied my knots at the top. Normally, down here would also be loops like this, but this came off my batch working project, so um, they're just loose ends back here. I've already tied my overhead knots on this end, so I'm gonna flip it around and do it on the other end to show you. And basically when you're doing this, you just wanna make sure that you're not pulling them a whole bunch, cause that's gonna affect the tension of everything. On smaller weavings like this, it's pretty hard to mess it up. On bigger ones, you kinda of wanna measure these little warp strings to make sure that they're all the same length, and then that will be the thing that makes it stay nice and straight for you. So I'm doing two at a time, except for at the end I'll do three because I always weave with an odd amount of warp strings. So at each end there'll be three. All right, so now we have all our overhead knots tied up. Again, I always use overhead knots because they won't slip and they won't come undone. In cases like this, it's not a huge deal, but it's just the habit I have, and so I stick with that. So now we're gonna sew all these ends back into the weaving so that we don't have all this loose stuff on the back. Some people leave these, and I just, I like to look at the back and have it look really nice and tidy. So I tuck them in. So we're just gonna go through, if you've seen the video of finishing the back of the weaving, it's the same concept. So we're gonna go through a channel, I'll have to help if I had the needle the right way. Go through the channel, thread the needle. I'm just using a yarn darning needle. Pull it through and pull it in nice and tight so you're kind of hiding that knot that you just tied. And then I'm just gonna do that all the way across. All right, so now I have all those ends sewn back through and I'm just gonna trim them off. Obviously always being very careful not to get any of your weft strings. And I'm just gonna cut them nice and short there so they just kind of disappear. All right, so all those are trimmed off and we're gonna just go back to the top and do the same thing up there. So when I sew back through, I usually like to go through about three of your weft strings, depending on how thick your yarn is. I just like to make sure that they're tucked in there far enough that there's no way that that's gonna just slip out. So as always, there's tons of different ways that you can tie off your weaving. This is just the way that I like to use. Some people weave upside down and use these loops for around their dowel, even though they might be a little bit loose. I like to have my weaving basically touching the dowel so that it's really nice and tight up against it. All right, so now we have the other end all tucked in, and as you can see, you're left with a really nice, clean finish. And there's tons of different ways to tie off your weaving. This is just the way that I use, but if you find something else, that works better for you by all means, do that way. But this is the way that I like to use and it works really well. All right, so now we're gonna tie this on to the dowel. So I've got my dowel here. I usually like to have about an inch and a half on each end, but again, this is personal preference. You can make it kind of as short or as wide as you want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get more of the same string I used for my warp. Again, personal preference, you can use a different color of string, you can use yarn, whatever you like. It's a terrible sound. So usually what I like to do when the dowel is this small is I do about three times the width of my dowel and then maybe a little bit extra. You just don't want to end up with not enough string because then you kind of have to just start over. So the first thing I need to do is actually tie 
this string somewhere on my weaving so that my end can be tucked in. So I'm just gonna kind of pick a weft string here. Leave yourself a little tail so that you can tuck that back in after. And then I'm just gonna tie a regular knot so I don't always use overhead knots. Just tie a regular knot so that it secures. Then I'm gonna go through this channel back up here. And I'm gonna go through this, these two warp strings there. So coming out to the front. So now I'm going to set my dowel here and what I like to do is on the first one I go back through that loop. So basically what you're trying to do is get between the two warp strings that your knots are tied because then that is going to allow any pressure and pulling to be on your warp string which isn't going to affect the rest of your weaving if that makes sense because if we just put our needle through some of your weft strings, that could pull up that loop and it could make things wonky. We want to make sure that this string is pulling on our warp strings, which are the ones that go up and down. So I'm going to go back through that same loop over to the front again. So now we have our first loop done. Now then what I like to do, again, personal preference, you can either go to the next loop, but I like to go to the one after. So I'm going to skip two warp strings and go to the next two. Now again, I have an odd amount of strings, so the last one you're not going to skip, you're going to go to that last one, because we always want to make sure that we catch the first one and the last one so that it hangs really nicely. Alright, so there's my last loop, and then I'm going to just make sure, while this is still kind of loose, make sure it's centered on your dowel, which that looks pretty good, but then I'm going to go back in and tighten up those strings. Because again, I like, to, I like it to sit really nice and flush to the dowel. I think it just looks cleaner. All right. So now, once again, we're going to have to tighten those up one more time yet. I'm going to go back through another channel here. Pull it all the way through. go back a few strings again just to tighten it up. So that's looking nice and tight and then I'm going to just tie it again around one of my weft strings. it off with an overhead knot and then just go through a few more strings here to tuck in that end and then clip it off oh, and then I gotta tuck in this end all right so now I'm gonna flip it over so you can see just how nice that looks from the front now. So it's really nice and tidy. Looks like these two strings kind of got crossed, so we can just adjust that. 
And if you find that this string is a little bit loose, you can always just even out any slack so that it at least is hanging all the same distance from the dowel there. But that looks pretty good. And now we need a string to hang it on. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie our string onto the dowel so that you have something to hang it on. So what I like to do is I've got my whole spool of thread and I like to wrap it around on these little ones just about three times. And then we're just gonna tie a knot here. I like to tie, because this isn't an overhead knot, I like to tie a triple knot just to make sure it doesn't slip at all. And then you can kind of clip off that end. Don't clip it off too short so it doesn't come undone. Just leave a tiny little tail there. All right, and then as far as the length of this goes, you can choose whatever you like, but I always avoid going too short, especially if it's a really big piece. So a general rule of thumb would be to kind of go to the end of your weaving here, and then that would be your length. So if you look at that, that looks like a pretty proportional um, loop there, but again, if you want to make it a little shorter, if you want to make it a little longer, you can do whatever you like. So I'm going to do kind of my standard. I'm going to make sure I give myself a good amount of slack. And clip that off. And again, I'm going to wrap it around three times. So I wrap it and I like to go on both sides of the loop. One more time and then again I'm just gonna tie a knot here and I like to tie my knots so they sit at the top here so that when this string is pulled it pulls from a good direction there because if it's pulling from the bottom it might look a little bit wonky and that's it you guys it's really simple it takes a little bit of time but now you have a nice clean finished weaving all right guys, so now you know how to get your weaving off the loom and onto the wall, which is probably the most exciting part, right? Because then you get to enjoy it. So I hope this was really helpful for you. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. If you have videos that you wanna see here, let me know. If you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, and click the bell to get notifications when I post new videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. I like moved the whole table and I did that because I'm too short.